Well, hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Coyle. I'm Director of Financial Planning here at Advanced Capital Group in Minneapolis. Today we are talking about filling out your W-4 and a basic understanding of your withholding. Let's begin. And first, a quick intro about myself. Again, my name is Matthew Coyle. I'm a CFP certified financial planner with the firm here in Minneapolis at ACG. My focus is individuals and individual wealth management, retirement planning, portfolio management, that area of the firm. Uh, again, I am a CFP, which means I'm a fiduciary, which means I'm also not a commissioned sales rep. Well, some miscellaneous notes before we begin. First of all, my contact information will be at the end of the slide, so feel free to reach out if you'd like to. Um, this will be educational only, so everybody's tax situation is a little bit different. So this is not to be tax advice, personal tax advice. This is to be educational and general only and designed to be an overview. And if you want some copies of the slides, they are available, but I also would recommend going online uh, to other resources. If you have further questions about these type of questions when it comes to W-4 or tax-related items, again, this is general only, not specific to you. Well, first, let's start with the obvious place to start, which is what is a W-4? A W-4 is the document that lets you tell the IRS exactly how much you need withheld from your paycheck each period so that you don't have a large tax bill at the end of the year or are owed too much in a refund at the end of the year, which means you overpaid. In 2020, there were some significant changes to the form, and they were personal exemptions and dependency exemptions. Now, as a reminder, when we file our taxes, all we are really doing is reconciling how much money we made versus how much money we owe. And at the end of the year, you don't want to have too large of a refund, but you certainly don't want to owe too much money either because then you may be subject to other IRS penalties. So let's dive into what the W-4 is and how to fill out each part of the form. All right, well, the first part is just simply information about you, first name, last name, social security number, and your marital status, and of course your address. Once you're through filling that out, you move on to part two. All right, part two, information about your jobs. Now, as a reminder, as I said earlier, when we are filling out our taxes at the end of the year, we are essentially doing an exercise of reconciling. We're comparing what we made to what we owe. And uh, if you absolutely withhold nothing and have a very large tax bill at the end of the year, you'd be subject to underpayment penalties and things like that from the IRS. Conversely, if you, uh, and oppositely, if you withheld far too much, you'd receive a very large refund at the end of the year and are essentially giving an interest-free loan to the government for that period of time. Either situation is not good. So this gives you the information or the option to uh, tell the IRS how many jobs you have, what you want withholding, and there's a worksheet um, at the end that you can work through. You can see it in part B there. Now, if you have one job only or your spouse does not work, you would not complete these steps. You would go straight to step five. And if you have multiple jobs or your spouse is employed, you would complete steps two through four and then go to step five. So this is only for people with multiple jobs who have multiple streams of income that may need to declare that. Now, it's very likely that all of the jobs you hold, you have already filled out a W-4 and you're having the same withheld at each uh, particular company or particular place of employment. And that's fine. Um, in that case, you would adjust accordingly in these steps. But just follow the order A through C there. And there is a worksheet uh, income estimator. You see it in part B there. Uh, which is at the end of the W-4 form, and you would work through that worksheet to determine the appropriate amount of withholding based on the income you think you're going to have from your jobs. And again, at the end of the year, you'll simply reconcile what you made versus what you owe. All right, information about your dependents. Part three, if you make $200,000 or less and you're single, or if you make $400,000 and less and you are married filing jointly, you are eligible for child tax credits. As a reminder, personal exemptions, and dependency exemptions were changed a bit. Uh, there are no more personal exemptions, but there are child tax credits. And this is what replaced the dependency exemptions as a, a proxy for that. So if your income is less than 200 or less than 400, single or married filing jointly respectively, you have access to the child tax credit in the US. The IRS will give you the tax credit. Now this is where you determine if you are eligible for that. You simply multiply the number of qualifying children under the age of 17 by $2,000. You follow the steps here, and then you add the amounts together, and then you'll determine whether or not you have access to the child tax credit, and then you move on to step four. Okay, four and five, other adjustments. Let's lump these together because part five is basically just a signature. We don't need to explain that. So part four is other adjustments to your income. Other adjustments not from jobs. Now, in this particular section, you're going to have the ability or the option to declare some other income you may be expecting for the year on non-W-4 type uh, positions where you might have some side income or some passive real estate income that might be coming into you that is taxable, but there's no W-4 um, being filed for those. 
Um, so for example, let's say you had a primary employment, which is this W-4 represents. You had perhaps a side income or a, a side gig or a side hustle or a part-time income that's not having you fill out a W-4. And you know you're going to owe tax on that money at the end of the year, but you don't have the option to withhold from it for, at that particular place of employment because they don't do that. Maybe it's part-time. This is where you may be able to declare uh, some of that income and have some additional monies taken out uh, because you know that those taxes will be owed at the end of the year, but you have no way of paying them. As a reminder, we're only reconciling at the end of the year income that we made versus tax we owe. And if you know there's going to be additional income on which tax will be owed and you have no option to withhold any tax from that during the year, this is a chance to do that here. So this gives you a chance to withhold additional funds due to other income that you have, other adjustments, and that's why it's called other adjustments. And that is in step four. You simply finish that out. Sign step five, and we'll move on to a couple miscellaneous notes about income. Okay, well, I do want to return to step three for one brief moment here and talk about estimating income because this is an important step. Step three basically asks you to estimate your income based on how many jobs that you have. Now, there is an app you can go to online. Uh, it's actually a fairly convenient app. You can see there the uh, URL I've put at the top of the screen there, www.irs.gov forward slash W4 app. And what you can use is there's a very, very nice tax withholding estimator that the IRS provides you at that particular website. Now, because this is general advice only, I, of course, cannot tell you what to put uh, on step three as far as income because everyone's different. However, if you go to this tax withholding estimator, it's well worth your time. Go through the steps. It doesn't take you too long, and you can estimate how much to put in step three, and I think it will be very useful to use that tool. I've used it myself. It works quite well. Um, and if you have multiple jobs, of course, uh, you will owe tax on multiple jobs. And if there's not withholding being taken out of each job uh, paycheck, then you will have a larger bill at the end of the year, and you don't want to have that happen. So I would uh, very much encourage you to go to the tax withholding estimator in step three at that uh, web address right there and check it out when you have a moment. All right, a couple final notes, and we will wrap things up. First of all, you can amend or change a W-4 anytime you like, so remember that. And also remember the W-4's purpose. It is to assist you in the reconciling process at the end of the year. You are paying as you go so that you don't owe too much or owe too little at the end of the year. You want to pay exactly what you are as close as you need to pay. No more, no less. And that's what the W-4's purpose is. So do be honest about the taxable income you're reporting. You can be subject to underpayment penalties if you do not pay enough throughout the year. It's no fun, and you certainly don't want to be in that situation. So remember the purpose of the W-4. You can change it any time, and do be honest about the taxable income because it could come back to haunt you if you're not reporting things correctly. Okay, well, thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate the time. If you have any questions, there is my information there on the screen there, mcoil at acgbiz.com or 651-262-8394 is my phone number. Feel free to reach out. Again, I cannot give you specific tax advice on what to fill out because everybody's tax situation is a little different. However, if you have general questions about these or other questions you may have about uh, some of the things that we do for our clients here and some of the plan participants we work with at ACG, feel free to reach out. And again, I thank you very much for your time and you have a very, very nice day. Take care.